My name is uh, Dr. David Rappaport. I'm the founder and medical director of Cool Spa. And uh, in this brief video, I want to review uh, preoperative instructions for your breast augmentation. Um, I do a lot of breast augmentations in my practice, and I find that uh, I'm repeating myself many, many times, and I'm sure I'm going to keep doing that, but I wanted to have this video available for people that want to have sort of my perspective on pre-breast augmentation instructions. Um, so let's do this in terms of time, uh, because the, the, the instructions sort of fall differently depending on how far away the operation is. Um, one of the things I'll be alluding to is the endoscopic approach, and that is when we do the breast augmentation through the underarm instead of with a scar under or on the breast. Uh, that is an option in my practice. I've been doing it for about 25 years now, um, and I love the technique because it offers precision in breast augmentation with me visualizing exactly what I'm doing but no scar on the breast. So for some issues you'll see there are some uh, specific instructions for that procedure. So anyway, uh, your operation is now six weeks out. Um, at that point in time, I would say, is a good time to stop certain supplements. So supplements such as fatty supplements, vitamin E, omega-3, fish oil supplements, I would recommend that you stop taking those if you can six weeks before the surgery. These are all things that can thin the blood. They don't thin the blood the way aspirin does. They do it in a milder way, but it's a more cumulative over time way. And by the way, that would also include red wine, which contains a substance called resveratrol, which is a good thing in general in life. It's good to have slightly thin blood probably in life so we don't have as much clotting, heart attacks, strokes, but it is not good before elective surgery. So if possible, if you have the time, six weeks before you're stopping your fatty supplements, your red wine, um, and the like. The other thing that would be good to stop around or cut down significantly six weeks before is exercising your pec muscle. This is under the assumption that we're using what we call the dual plane approach or the subpectoral approach, meaning the implants would be sitting under the pec muscle, at least the top of them. And what that means is that we're going to be cutting the bottom of the pec muscle. If we're going to be cutting a muscle, it's better that that muscle be more thin and more lazy. So giving that muscle a rest for four to six weeks uh, would be very desirable. You can still have crazy workouts in every other respect, but you don't want to be specifically strengthening your pec muscles. So that means stopping push-ups, flies, bench presses, things that are specifically aimed to strengthen your pec muscles. Let your pec muscles get a little lazy. Uh, that way they will bleed less when I cut them and they will also hurt less afterwards. <clears throat> okay, now we are at two weeks before surgery. If you are on the pill, I recommend every patient to go off the pill or to go off um, any supplemental hormonal uh, like HRT, hormone replacement therapy, because the pill or, or supplemental um, uh, female hormones are known to increase the risk of blood clots, meaning DVT, PE, pulmonary embolus. Those are very, very undesirable catastrophic events that can happen around general anesthesia. We take all precautions to prevent these complications, but it's important that you take the precautions that would help minimize the risk. Being off the pill, is, in my opinion and the opinion of hematologists I've consulted with, a very desirable thing. And so what I tell my patients, having any procedure with anesthesia is if you can, please be off the pill or female hormone supplements for two weeks before and two weeks after. So that's the two-week mark. If you're going to have your surgery through the underarm, then one of the things we do virtually always is treat the underarm with botulinum toxin and the reason we do that is to stop sweating in the underarm and by stopping sweating we're stopping the smell that smell is caused by bacteria so the whole point of this undertaking is to reduce the bacterial counts in the underarm and have the underarm be like any other part of your body in terms of the bacteria that are on it that's because we have concerns about capsular contracture potentially being related to weak bacteria growing around a breast implant. Um, I, in my own experience, do not see a higher contracture rate when I go through the underarm, but to level the playing field, to eliminate our concern about that, we treat you with uh, the botulinum toxin 
at least 10 days before, preferably usually two or three weeks before the procedure, so that we know we've taken the bacterial side of, of your underarm out of the picture. Now when we're at the one week mark before surgery, that would be the time to stop things like aspirin, Advil, Motrin. Those are the stronger blood thinners, but they don't last that long. So if you stop them seven or at most 10 days before, you're fine. You don't really need to stop them longer before surgery, in my opinion. Um, and you will be continuing to be off of those substances for two weeks after surgery, please. Now we're two days out from surgery. Uh, now's the time to start using the Hippocleans that you purchased. It's a pink sort of silky smooth soap that you're going to wash with. You're going to wash everything from the neck down below your belly button, sort of gently lather it on and rinse off. We'd like to see you doing that at least the day before surgery, preferably morning and evening, as well as the morning of surgery. Um, now we're one day before surgery on your, your, your shave and your Hippocleans shower, and of course you remember you are fasting. You're to have nothing to eat or drink before surgery. We'll give you very specific instructions as to how many hours for food and how many hours for clear liquids. Uh, I don't want to give that as a blanket statement to avoid any possible misunderstandings, but it is crucial that you approach surgery, even if it's IV sedation, breast augmentation is general anesthesia, you need to approach anesthesia with an empty stomach, and that is crucial for your safety. On the morning of surgery, if you're going through the underarm, we want you to shave fresh. You don't want to shave a surgical area in general hours before the operation. You want it to be just an hour or a few hours before the operation, not 12 hours or more before the operation. And that's because any shaved area, if you think about it, has kind of little microscopic wounds. And if you give it 12 hours or more, what's happening is you now have bacteria growing on these microscopic wounds. And of course, that's something we don't want to have. So that's true in general for surgery. So I'm hoping that all these instructions will help you get through the procedure safely, minimizing the risk of complications as much as possible. Remember, these are my instructions. If you're not my patient, you really need to reach out to your own doctor to hear what he or she has to say. Thank you and good luck.